Hi there again. My name is Dushan, this is my colleague Mindegas. Hello. And today we're going to talk about stall and later we're gonna jump into the A320 sim and we're going to show you how the aircraft behaves in stall and how to actually recover from the stall. So in order to better understand stall, first we have to understand the angle of attack. Now the angle of attack is the angle between the relative airflow, which is presented by this line, and the cord line of the airfoil, in this case, this upper line. Now don't confuse the angle of attack with the pitch angle, because in one scenario you might have the pitch angle of 20 degrees, while actually your angle of attack is just 5 degrees. Now in order to better understand this, we will go to the lift versus angle of attack graph, and now my colleague Mindegas is going to explain what happens actually. Okay, so this boundary from zero angle of attack to critical AOA, which is this uh, green line right here, is essentially represented by this uh, uppermost picture, where you have laminar airflow around the airfoil all around. Uh, what happens at the critical AOA, where the coefficient of lift is at its peak, is uh, the airflow around the airfoil starts separating, and once you pass that, the separation point moves so much forward that you actually just completely lose lift. And that is when uh, stall actually happens. So even though you're increasing angle of attack, the coefficient of lift just uh, drops uh, dramatically. Okay, speaking about the Airbus specifically, in normal law, uh, we have to keep two uh, things in mind, which is the alpha protection and alpha max. So if the pilot uh, increases the angle of attack up to the point of alpha prot uh, and releases the stick, the aircraft will essentially try to maintain this angle of attack and not exceed it. But the pilot can always override it by pulling back on the stick and going all the way to alpha max, which is the limit for essentially the airplane in nor uh, normal law. So as long as the pilot is pulling up in normal law, this angle of attack will never be exceeded. Uh, the difference between normal law and alternate is that you do not have this limitation right here. Even though the aircraft will want to pitch down once it uh, approaches uh, critical AOA, it will easily pass alpha max if the pilot pulls back on the stick. So essentially this is what we're going to be showing to you guys in the flight sim. So let's go and check it out. All right, now that we are in the sim, let's go ahead and uh, see how the airplane behaves in uh, normal and alternate laws. So Dushan is going to be the pilot flying and I'll be, let's say, the pilot monitoring and I'll just uh, comment on what he's doing and how the airplane is behaving. So, let's go. Okay, first of all, let's see how the airplane behaves in normal law. So, we have all, the, all of the uh, flight control computers on, as we can see on the overhead panel right here. Uh, we are cruising at 25,000 feet, heading 225, speed 250. Uh, the aircraft right now is weighing at about 63 tons. Also, the auto throttle is on and autopilot is on. So, Dushan, would you kindly please uh, set the throttles back to idle? Idle. Yeah. As we can see, the auto throttle disengages. And... Dushan just disengaged the autopilot. So let's just try to maintain 25,000 feet. And let's look at the PFD display and see the speed trend uh, decreasing. So what we are looking for in this case is to see how the normal law uh, alpha protections work. So once we approach the amber and black fence, which uh, indicates the angle of alpha prod, uh, and add one degree of angle attack uh, to that, we will engage the alpha floor function, which we will be able to see on the ECAM display, which will basically do, which will basically set the uh, power to toga, even though the thrust levers will still be at idle. So, we are approaching approximately 200 knots. The airplane will apply slide forward pressure but Dushan will try to make a stupid move and counteract that just for example purposes. We just passed uh, alpha prot and we need that one additional uh, degree of angle of attack to trigger the alpha floor. So just keep pulling up more and there we have it. Power set to toga automatically, uh, auto throttle on as well 
even though the thrust levers are still uh, at idle. So, now Dushin will pull up even more and we can see that we are approaching Alpha Max, which is the uh, red bar that we can see on the PFD display. And what will basically happen, the aircraft will not want to exceed this angle of attack and will just basically stay there. So th technically we aren't even stalling because the aircraft is still climbing and the angle of attack hasn't been exceeded. So all there is left to it is just to release the back pressure, apply slight forward pressure, and the aircraft start, starts descending, uh, gaining uh, airspeed, and soon we'll be back to normal flight. Let's level off at 25,000 feet again. Yeah, reset the throttles, back to climb, auto throttle on, we can actually turn on the autopilot. And we are pretty much back to straight and level flight, so as we just saw, in normal law the aircraft doesn't really want to stall, it has angle of attack protections which even though Dushin was trying as hard as he could, he couldn't uh, overcome. All right, so now let's uh, proceed to the alternate law. Uh, to enter alternate law, what we need to do is go to the overhead panel, turn off ELAC 1 and ELAC 2. The autopilot now disengages and on the ECAM we can see that we have alternate law confirming our choice. If we also go to the flight control page, we can also cross check that we have ELAC 1 and 2 off. So, we're basically in the same settings, 25,000 feet, heading 225, speed 250, and 62 tons and a half. So, Dushan right now, put the throttle back to idle, idle. and maintain, maintain uh, 25,000 feet. If we observe the PFD, the uh, airspeed starts decreasing just like before, but what the difference is going to be this time is that uh, we will not have alpha floor so once uh, we exceed a certain angle of attack that we would have in normal law we will actually not have uh, the toga power set automatically for us it will just stay on uh, idle like it is right now and the second difference is pretty obvious we will not have uh, angle of attack protection so basically Dushin will do a stupid thing and pull up even more and go even deeper into the stall for example purposes. So as we can see the red and black fence is at, starts at about 200 knots which we are approaching right now. And once we pass that we will get the stall warning. Dushin will try to pull on the stick for example purposes again and then he will apply forward pressure put the throttle to toga and recover. Stall, stall. Stall, stall. Yeah, so basically now we are in the stall. What we need to do now is apply forward pressure. Let the nose go low. Apply toga power and keep the nose, keep the attitude like minus 15 just not to enter the secondary stall. Okay, now we can start pulling up. Airspeed above 250 and increasing. And we carefully pull up without uh, crossing any, any boundaries. And since we were above 20,000 feet, we did not put the flaps to 1, according to the QRH. Dushan now set the auto throttle back to on. I will turn on ELAC 2 and 1 also back to on. And let's climb back to 25,000 feet. Autopilot 1 on. And pretty much we will go back to the same settings as before. So, 
what we just witnessed is the difference between the normal and alternate laws which were pretty obvious uh, basically saying that alt alternate law did not have uh, angle of attack protections which actually allowed us to deliberately stall the aircraft and comparing it to the normal law which it didn't we had to apply the stall recovery procedure and we successfully succeeded in doing that and a little bonus clip you guys uh, we are basically going to do the same thing as we did before with the alternate law except that uh, once Dushan actually stalls and starts recovering we will show a bad example of uh, stall recovery which is pulling up too soon and entering what is called the secondary stall and it's going to be pretty obvious once that happens since after we exit the stall warning for a few moments Dushan will pull up and we'll get the stall warning again and the aircraft will basically empty the stall so let's uh, do the same thing again ELAC 2 off and ELAC 1 off autopilot goes to off same settings as before throttle back to idle throttle idle yeah maintain altitude okay so basically we are approaching 200 knots the, the stall boundary uh, for our configuration again Dushan will enter the stall again and once he pitches down he'll pull up too soon and enter the secondary stall 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 now Dushan's pitching the aircraft nose down putting toga power and it might seem as if the instrument is showing that we are out of stall, but he pulls up too soon. And we can see the red and black fence chases us down again. So we need to have a safe margin uh, to actually prevent the secondary stall from happening. So at this indicated airspeed, at this altitude, we should be okay by pulling up slightly and recovering without entering uh, secondary stall and we are pretty much back to straight and level flight we can put the throttle levers back to climb and that's how secondary stall basically looks so basically to conclude our stall recovery procedure we uh, showed you guys that in normal law essentially in theory you cannot stall the aircraft as much as Dushan was trying pulling back on the stick the alpha protection was uh, preventing stall from basically happening in alternate law though as you saw before the aircraft did enter stall and we have to apply the stall recovery procedure and as a bonus clip we also showed a huge mistake that you should never do is pull up too soon and enter the secondary stall which was well essentially a, a mistake made on purpose for example purposes so uh, keep in mind that uh, we were showing this uh, from a very basic standpoint without uh, going too much into detail of these procedures just for well let's call it demonstration purposes so Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, uh, subscribe to the channel, see you in the next and one. See you in the next one. Bye.